Okay, so just a quick rundown on how to use an excavator to grade. I get people asking me which part of the excavator is used for what, and it pretty much comes down to whatever you want to use it for. The first thing people notice and think that is the main part of an excavator, obviously, is the bucket. It's not only just for scooping dirt, it's for loosening soil, it's used for just sliding soil or dirt from one spot to the next and the blade is the second part not all excavators have blades especially the great big ones usually when it's a project where you've got a huge excavator um, the excavator is lifting the dirt and maybe swinging it one way or the dump truck is getting loaded by the excavator the dirt's moved and then a bulldozer with a blade is what does the pushing of the dirt on these little, they call them a midi excavator, which is like a, a smaller mid-size excavator. And then there's mini excavators, which typically are about 12,000 pounds or less. This particular machine is right at 20,000 pounds. Um, I'm just going to try to give a very basic explanation on how to use one. That way, you guys out there that are thinking about renting an excavator to use on a project you'll have an idea of how to use it. The first thing you've got to do is loosen the soil by using the teeth to, the best way is to point the teeth straight down and rake the ground to loosen it up. An excavator, midi or mini sized, they generally don't have enough grip to where they can just put a blade down and dig into the ground. So it needs to be loosened up a little bit for you to use it. So here's a clip on how to loosen soil. Okay, let's get a little bit lower to the ground and step back a little bit so you guys can kind of see how this grade goes a little bit up in elevation. And the whole idea is that we are wanting to knock that hump down. So this is kind of where the term grading comes from. You're wanting to change the grade or the slope of an existing piece of land to a slope that you want for either erosion control or you want to slope it to get the biggest thing is get it to where you can build a structure on it or you can get water to run like what we're doing here away from a road to the far end of the property um, like right here it was straight from the road to where the teeth of the bucket are right now and then it comes up and incline a little bit so it just takes practice don't be in a hurry to do this perfectly your first time and you've just got to play with the machine and you know rent a really small one for a week until you get used to the controls then you can rent a bigger machine and really make some ground quickly so try to watch in this next clip how it looks like the ground level is coming up on the bucket whereas i'm actually pulling a straight line with those teeth and you have to visualize it in your mind pulling a straight line toward yourself uh, one of the things once you get good at controlling it is finding a fixed point on the bucket and try to pull a straight plane don't even worry about where the teeth are at because that'll that'll confuse you when you're learning so just watch that bucket and what's actually happening is I'm pulling a straight plane and as this grade comes up it's just gathering that material and then I'm just going to rake it backwards toward a low area where I want to raise it up. Alright, so you can see that I had to take two grabs because I grabbed a rock that was underground and it lifted my bucket up so when you do that and you feel something resist you and it pops that bucket up reach back dig a little deeper and pull 
And you may have to do that two or three times, but eventually you're going to get low enough if it's not just a huge rock. You're going to get low enough to where it hooks the bottom of the rock and the rock will just roll right out. So we pulled this grade straight and we've got some extra material here. Now you can use either, you can move backwards and keep pulling this grade that you've established or you can use the bucket to pull up and set that front edge of that bucket down and just back drag like this. Okay, so you saw how that worked. We collected material from a high spot, and then we pulled forward, set the bucket down. You can see how nice and smooth this is. Unless you've got a grading bucket, which doesn't have teeth, it's just got a smooth cutting edge. When you're raking, it's gonna leave teeth marks in the soil. So something we'll get into later on is pivoting that bucket up to where there's a flat bottom, and you can pull a straight edge. Um, so now we've got a grade established here. So how do we continue that grade going down? I'll reposition the camera and show you guys how to use that. Okay, so we've gotten this area on grade where we want. Now it's just become a heck of a lot easier. You just slide the machine over and most of the time when I'm doing it this way, I'll only move over about one third of the width of the bucket because if you come over the full width and you start pulling material material is going to very quickly start rolling around the edge of that side of your bucket because it's going to fill up and that's why we only come over just a little bit and pull this bucket and what i'm looking at is not what i've got to collect all i'm watching is i'm trying to make these teeth line up at the bottom of these tree trenches that I've already done. And even more importantly, another way to look at it to use in your mind to make this easy is you want this bucket to dig into where you can just barely see daylight between the previously graded ground and the edge of that cutting edge. And you just follow that plane and you just keep moving over and you will start cutting that grade as far as like from the road to you, you're starting to cut it down. Check this out. Okay, so I've changed you guys from a wide angle view to a linear, so hopefully you can look with me and be able to tell the lay of the land a little bit better. To my right here is the ground that we just got on grade. We've got that slope that we want to come from the road and continue all the way to the other side of the field. So two things you can do. If you're just having fun playing with the excavators, continue what we've been doing with pulling that earth towards you and pulling that same plane. But the main thing is getting your starter area, which is this area where you want it. And you want to be able to either visualize in your mind after you've got a little more experience, cutting a plane from the edge of that road straight to the bottom edge of, or, or the bottom grade on the other side of the field. If you've got a high area, that's a lot easier to do. If you don't, and you've just got nothing but low area, it's gonna get a little more complicated because then you have to start bringing material in. Or grabbing material from that side, bring it all the way here until you've got a plane pushed in. I know that's a little bit more complicated than most of you want to hear while you're first learning. So let's do this the easy way. We're going to use the blade on the excavator to start cutting a grade in. And we're going to do the same thing, same principles as the bucket, only you've got seven foot wide of cut instead of just a three foot wide of cut at one time. So check this out. All right, so we got the machine positioned now, essentially we've got a little windrow or you know just a, that excess dirt that we raked up from having our grade you start back away from that burn while you're while you're learning 
okay i've just lowered that blade to just above the ground and i'm just going to push forward and hit this dirt and see how it rolls out we don't want to dig in we're wanting to grade the earth so we're not wanting to be too aggressive we want to make small changes and collect small amounts of dirt over a great distance Okay, so that's simple. All we did was knock that berm down, essentially. So what we're gonna do next is lower that blade just a little bit below the surface of the ground where we're at and collect a little bit more material and push it on out. We've got a little bit of a high spot here, so it's probably gonna dig in and cut that top off. All right, so now this is the fun part. You've cut that high ridge off, and if you look behind the excavator, you can see that there's a straight plane to the road with a slight downhill. Any rainwater that falls out of the sky is gonna land on the earth, and it's gonna come the way we want it to. So now, we've come to a spot. I don't know if you guys can really see this, but if you saw a plane, from the bottom of the cutting edge of that blade, this area right here takes a sharp kind of a dip, but we want to continue a straight plane. So watch the blade more than the dirt. And as I come up to the edge of where it drops off, I'm going to lift my blade up just a little bit so it can start depositing that loose dirt onto the ground and it'll in effect raise the grade. Okay, so now you guys can probably see a little bit better the change in this grade from ground level up to the plane where I want to be. That's a good eight to 10 inch drop. So we're gonna to have to get more material from the other side and push it on down here. We're gonna just barely dig that blade in to where we start collecting material over a long distance, a little bit at a time. That way we don't cause an indention from biting into the ground. So we're gonna start collecting and push it all the way out and you guys will see how this develops.
can see the smooth plane that we've created from the edge of the road on this track. And you can also see that loose dirt up there. That's the edge of where we just cut this grade down. The higher that ledge is, the less you're going to be able to cut into it, depending on the size of the machine you got. With this machine, with that much ground, I'm probably going to only start cutting in about that far because as I cut through it and it starts loosening that material, that material is going to start spreading across the blade in front of the machine. And what we want to do is gather as much material as we can without material spilling over the other side by the time we get to the other. So one thing I'm going to do and encourage you to do as a new operator is run the machine on a low idle. Don't idle it up because that way it doesn't have as much power and it'll force you to make smaller adjustments and cut the dirt in smaller amounts. And that's a lot easier if you mess up to be able to back drag that material and start over. It also makes it harder for you to cut into the ground too much. So just watch how we kind of ease into that material on this side and how it starts gathering material on the blade. thing also to notice is that I'm actually only watching this corner of my blade and I'm watching for it to just barely skim that ground that way I know that blade's cutting the dirt on the other side to that same depth. I'm just glancing over to this side to make sure I'm not cutting in too much that way. And that's how you use a bucket and a blade to move material from one spot of the property to the other. I'm gonna put you guys at a little bit higher vantage point so you can look down and see how I'm using the machine to manipulate the ground and move it to where I want it to go. All right, so I know it's hard for you guys to see, but all this area in the middle is a big dome shape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fan out that dome shape to a couple of low areas. One is an area we started to fix and ran out of material. You may be able to see that water over there. We're gonna move some material there. And also, if I can get you guys Set back up here. Right there. Okay. So I'm going to split the difference. Half of that dome is going to come back this way because this really dives off. And there's a holding area there where water's just going to sit. So watch and see how I move material from over there and I just cut a straight plane. And it'll be nice and smooth for water to run exactly where I want it to.
All right, and that's kind of like a basic rundown of how to use an excavator. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just put them in the comments below. I'll be glad to try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. And uh, like I say, just take your time, rent a really small machine because they work the same. It's just you got a little bit more muscle with the bigger machines. But you can rent a small excavator for less than a couple of hundred bucks a day and a few hundred for a whole week. You know, get out there, take your time, familiarize yourself with the controls, and then watch this video and re-familiarize yourself with kind of the fundamentals on how to actually use a machine to get some work done. You guys go out, play in the dirt, have fun with it, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video.